Good day, students. For today's discussion, we will have the anatomy and the functions of your liver. For the learning objectives, at the end of this lesson, the students are expected to identify the parts and functions of the liver, determine important cell types associated with the liver and their functions, and lastly, familiarize the blood flow mechanism in the liver. So let us begin the discussion with a gross anatomy or the macroscopic appearance of your liver. So this is how the liver looks like and it weighs about 1.2 to 1.5 kilograms. So you just have to imagine that your liver is about the size of a football, although this can increase to over 10 kilograms, especially in chronic cirrhosis. And it is located at the right-hand part of the abdomen behind the lower ribs. So here are the ribs covering your liver. So it's also a means of protecting your liver and other internal organs such as your heart. And also, your liver is divided into two lobes by a ligament. So we call, we call it as the falciform ligament. And take note that the right lobe, okay, so this is the right lobe, and this one, this is the left lobe. So the right lobe is six times larger than your left lobe. However, there is no known functional difference between the lobes and the communications flows freely between all areas of the liver. So our liver is functionally divided into two lobes, the right and the left lobe. And the external division is marked on the front of the liver by a falciform ligament. So this falciform ligament attaches the liver to the front body wall. And of course, it separates the liver into the left medial lobe, this one, and the right lateral lobe. Another thing we have here, the back view of the liver. So um, if we see the rear part of the liver, this is how it looks like. So the right lobe is here now. And this is already the left lobe. So this one, this is the right lobe. And also... For the left lobe, we have here. So the right lobe is separated from the other lobes by the gallbladder fossa, this one. So by the gallbladder fossa and the fossa for the inferior vena cava, so this one. So when we say fossa, it means it's a shallow depression or pit or a shallow part or a hollow part of an organ. And of course, your left lobe, on the other hand, includes the quadrate lobe. So we have here the quadrate lobe and the caudate lobe. So we have the caudate lobe. So this is now the left part of your liver. For the functions of the liver, we have first metabolism. So in our previous discussions, we have learned that the liver is capable of metabolizing proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, and also their storage. So for the storage, we have here the carbohydrates such as glycogen also again as what i have mentioned proteins such as your lipoproteins okay let me just emphasize this one lipoproteins are types of proteins that carry lipids so it's a common cause of confusion so again these are proteins that carry lipids next one your liver also stores fats and triglycerides Next one, for the synthetic function of the liver. So the main substances produced by the liver are your proteins like albumin and also blood clotting factors. And also take note of this one. Your liver is the one producing bile. Okay? Because your bile is stored in the gallbladder. Again, this one, this bile. So it's a digestive fluid which is produced again from the liver but it is stored in the gallbladder. And lastly, we have the detoxification function of the liver. So the liver plays several roles in detoxification. First, it filters our blood to remove large toxins. And also, the bile synthesized by the liver is full of cholesterol and other fat-soluble toxins. So in short, the liver removes toxin from our body through this bile. And also, it will disassemble unwanted chemicals so that it could be removed out from our body. 
And another thing, we have this enzyme. So we call it a cytochrome P450. So this enzyme is again involved in the detoxification process of the liver and it decreases drug efficacy. So take note, the drugs that we take are foreign to our body. So what will happen now, the liver will break down the drug so it won't hurt our body. And specific dose will be given to account for the amount to be detoxified. So those are the main functions of your liver. Let's take a look at the blood supply to the liver. So first, you have to remember that about 1,500 ml of blood per minute passes the liver. So that's the approximate amount of blood that is detoxified and that is used up in the liver. Okay, so now the blood from the heart will enter the liver via the hepatic artery. So this supplies blood to the liver from the heart. That's why it is oxygen rich. And this accounts for the 25% of the total blood supply. Another one, blood is also supplied to the liver through this portal vein. So in short, the portal vein will carry the blood to the liver and that comes from our gastrointestinal tract. That's why it's nutrient rich. And this accounts for 75% of the total blood supply. So you have here the hepatic artery. This one carries the blood to the liver and this is coming from the heart. So it is oxygen rich. This one, it is the portal vein. So this carries blood to the liver from our gastrointestinal tract and the blood is nutrient rich. And how about how the blood leaves the liver? So the blood leaves the liver via the hepatic vein. So this one, so this is your hepatic vein. So we can assume that because the blood has been used up by the liver, so it is already nutrient and oxygen depleted. And also it could leave the hepatic ducts that may carry the bile towards your gallbladder. So this is your gallbladder. So in this illustration, we can see that the venous blood coming from gastrointestinal tract drains into the superior and inferior mesenteric veins. So this is your gastrointestinal tract. This one is the superior mesenteric vein. This one is the inferior mesenteric vein. So this is also another illustration showing the superior mesenteric vein and inferior mesenteric vein. And these two ves vessels are then joined by the splenic vein just posterior to the neck of the pancreas. So this is your splenic vein. And the three of them will form a portal vein and then it will split to form the right and the left branches each supplying about half of the liver with blood coming of course from the gastrointestinal tract so the portal venous blood contains all the products of digestion absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract so all useful and non-useful products are processed in the liver before being either released back into the hepatic veins, which join the inferior vena cava, or stored in the liver for later use. And also, we have the portal triad, which constitutes mainly of the portal vein, which supplies the blood to the liver, and that is coming from our gastrointestinal tract. We also have the hepatic artery, which supplies the liver with blood coming from the heart, and of course, the common bile duct in which the bile is excreted out from your liver. This is the biliary tree which serves as the excretory system of the liver. So mainly it excretes bile. So as mentioned earlier, the bile is produced from what organ? So it is produced from the liver and it is stored in the gallbladder. So this is our gallbladder and the other name for that is the bile sac. So that's your gallbladder, the storage area of the bile. Okay, so the bile, the main function of which is the digestion of the food that we eat. And mainly, it emulsifies the fats. So it emulsifies fats. So in short, it will break down fats into fatty acids, which can then be taken into the body by the digestive tract. So again, it aids in the digestion process. So the bile contains cholesterol, bile pigments, uh, bile acids, and also bile salts. And once the bile is synthesized in the liver, it will pass through the hepatic duct. So this is your right hepatic duct and left hepatic duct towards the common hepatic duct. And it will go to the cystic duct and now the bile will be stored in the gallbladder. And once the bile is needed 
for the digestion of food, the gallbladder will squeeze out the bile. So we have the hormone cholecystokinin. So let me write that one. Cholecystokinin. So this hormone, the shortcut of which is CKK, comes from the Greek word choli means bile, cysto means sac or the bile sac, and kinin means move or to move. So in short, it will help the gallbladder to move or to contract, to squeeze out the bile. And that is also the reason why we have this term cholecystectomy. So choli cystectomy. So I know you already have an idea about this one. So this means the removal of the gallbladder. So the hormone cholecystokinin will help the gallbladder contract to squeeze out the bile if needed to digest the food. And cholecystectomy is the removal of the gallbladder. So once the bile is excreted from the gallbladder, it will now pass through the common bile duct. This is the last part of the biliary tract, the common bile duct. And it reaches the gastrointestinal tract and released into the duodenum, so or the first part of the intestine where the bile is secreted. And the bile salt now again will emulsify the fats in the ileum. And um, this is the part where the absorption of fats and bile salts occur in the ileum. And then the bile, sort, uh, bile salts are reabsorbed back to the liver to be used. Now let us have the microscopic anatomy of the liver. So the liver is divided into microscopic units called the lobules. So these lobules are the functional units of the liver and this is how it looks like under the microscope. So it is a six-sided structure. So you have here one, two, three, four, five, six. So it has six sides with a central vein. So this is the central vein. And each corner contains the portal triad. So I hope you still remember this one. This is mentioned earlier. So the portal triad contains the portal vein, the hepatic artery, and the bile duct. So again, this is one lobule and it has six sides. And each side or each corner contains the portal triad. So this is just one corner containing the portal triad. So this is the portal vein, the hepatic artery, and the bile duct. Next one, we have here another illustration of the lobule. So this is the central vein, and also we have here the portal triad. For the major cell types of the liver, we have the hepatocytes and the kaffir cells. So the hepatocytes are mainly responsible for the regenerative properties of the liver. So remember, your liver can regenerate. And for example, in the cases of um, liver injury or liver damage, all the cells in the liver can change and divide until the normal size of the liver is restored. However, if the injury to the liver is so serious that the liver could no longer regenerate, then a person might need a liver transplant in that case. So that liver regeneration is mainly the responsibility of hepatocytes. Another thing, we have the kaffir cells. So this is another type of cell which is a specialized macrophage or these are phagocytes that line the sinusoids of the liver. So the main function of this kaffir cell is to engulf bacteria and other microorganisms or foreign debris, toxins, and other substances flowing through the sinusoids. So in short, they are mainly responsible for eliminating any microorganisms or toxins and substances that could harm our liver. So they are a means of protection. And this picture shows us a kaffir cell traveling through the sinusoid of the liver. So those are for the microscopic anatomy and cells of the liver. That ends my discussion. So I hope you learned something new. Thank you.